What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm counting down the top 5 best sneaker collaborations of 2020 so far. I know this video might seem early being that it's only March of 2020 and there's still 9 months left in the year, but to be honest we're all just kind of sitting around anyway and a bunch of really great sneakers have already dropped in 2020, so I feel like now is as good a time as any to drop this list. But before we jump into that, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Farfetch. When you shop at Farfetch.com, you're shopping from a huge selection of design and luxury products, including sneakers, from a bunch of different boutiques and stores all around the world. What Farfetch does is aggregate all the products from thousands of different stores and brands to make sure that you can find literally anything you're looking for. And even for today's video, I actually bought two of the sneakers that I'm using in today's video from Farfetch last week. But the best part is, if you're a new customer to Farfetch and you use my code SETHFF10, you get 10% off. You can save 10% on a lot of awesome stuff, I would use it on sneakers personally, but you can use it on whatever you want. So Make sure to check out some of the products that I talk about in today's video at Farfetch through the links in the description and use my code SETHFF10 to get 10% off. But now let's jump right into the list. So why don't we start things off with an honorable mention and that honorable mention is the Dior Air Jordan 1s. Now the reason this shoe isn't on the actual proper top 5 list is because it just hasn't come out yet. I feel like that's a pretty good reason and I wanted to put it on the list in some sort of honorary capacity so that people wouldn't be so butthurt about it like I know that they're going to be. <laughs> but with that said, it is a pretty interesting sneaker and not because of how it looks because let's be honest it just looks kind of plain the reason it's so interesting is because it's a luxury version of the Air Jordan 1 marked up at a more than luxury price of $2,000 and apparently the only way to get this shoe is to either be a VIP client at Dior and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year at their stores or to win a raffle which you're not really gonna win. I'm not at all saying that it's rigged, but based on the resale prices of this shoe, literally everyone is gonna be going for this shoe, so your chances of actually winning one of the super limited, I think 8,500 pairs, is almost nothing. The sneaker looks fine, I don't think it's anything that special, maybe I'm just being a contrarian because I just hate how much hype this shoe is getting, but at the end of the day, it's still gonna sell out, it's still gonna be one of the most popular sneakers for years to come, and uh, it just is what it is. As of right now, the raffle for this sneaker has been pushed back into late April. It's possible that it could get pushed back even farther, but there's just no way to know until we get there. But jumping into the actual list itself, at number 5 we've got the Off The Hook Reebok Electro 3D 97. I dropped an unboxing video on this shoe a couple days ago and I was surprised by how split people were over this sneaker. They either loved it or they hated it. I personally love it, I think it's a really great shoe. In the last year or so there have been two brands that in my opinion have been absolutely killing it and those two brands are Reebok and New Balance. And I love the fact that Reebok is collaborating with boutiques like Off The Hook because it really allows for some really cool possibilities. For example, example, this shoe is wild. This is a really crazy looking sneaker and I love it. Off the Hook or OTH is a Montreal based sneaker boutique and because they're in Montreal, they get a lot of snow. So the idea behind this collaboration's colorway is that the shoe is covered in snow and it's starting to melt and show off some of the dirt and the grass that's left around the city. Montreal locals call this month long period the snow break and I actually feel like that would have been a great name for this sneaker but it is what it is. I actually really like that inspiration because it's different and unique and because of that inspiration you come out with a sneaker colorway which is not something you'd usually see. Besides the colorway, the sneaker itself, the Electro 3D 97, is a pretty good looking shoe. It's got this chunky foam split midsole and it's also got this really interesting lacing system running down the center of the tongue. Not only that, but it's very light and it's pretty comfortable. It's one of those shoes that you can throw on feet and you just forget that you're wearing them. In my opinion, the Off The Hook Reebok Electro 97 is definitely one of the more underrated collaborations on this list, but it's definitely a sneaker that's worth checking out. Coming in at number four, we've got the brand new nylon variant of the Nike Sakai LD Waffle. Shitoze Abe, the designer behind Japanese brand Sakai, has followed up her wildly successful Nike collaboration last year with a new version this year. The main difference between this year's version and last year's is that the upper is no longer covered in mesh and now covered in sort of a soft nylon material. The brand new Nike Sakai collaboration dropped on March 10th and I actually grabbed my pair from Farfetch. And if you want to check out this pair at Farfetch for yourself, I've left a link to it in the description below. The idea behind the Nike Sakai collaboration was to mash up two different sneaker silhouettes into one and I think the way that that came together is pretty obvious because you have the doubling up of different panels on the upper and on the midsole. That kind 
concept absolutely gives this shoe a very unique look. And even in this monotone colorway, it still comes across really nicely. I've gotta be honest, when I saw this shoe online, I wasn't that excited about it. But like most people, when I got the shoe in hand, it completely changed my mind because the material makeup and the actual overall construction of the shoe is excellent. Another difference between this year's collaboration and last year's, besides just the material on the upper, is actually the lacing. Instead of using standard rope laces or just standard flat laces, Shitose Abe decided to use ribbons, which, um, I actually don't mind. I really thought I wouldn't like it, especially because it's not only just the rope laces, but it's also this very thin white lace as well. But when I actually saw it in person, again, my mind was changed. I think it's a really good looking sneaker. One of my favorite details of this shoe is the usage of materials. Rather than trying to emphasize different panels on the shoe by using different colors, she instead decided to use different materials. And I think it comes across in a much more subtle and much more clean way. I just love the way the suede and the leathers overlap and how they switch back and forth between which one's on top and which one's on bottom. I just think it's a beautifully done collaboration. If you like that subtle flex, the nylon Nike Sakai LD Waffle is definitely the way to go. Next up at number three, we've got the wildly popular Travis Scott Nike SB Dunk Low. This is actually my second pair of Travis Scott SB Dunk Lows because I got rid of the first pair and I picked up this pair from farfetch.com. I think it's obvious, but this shoe is wild. This shoe is just a mashup of like five different patterns and somehow it works. But the reason this shoe is so insanely popular is not because of how it looks, it's because it's a collaboration between Travis Scott, one of the most influential rappers in sneaker culture right now, just below Kanye, and some might even argue over Kanye, and the Nike SB Dunk Low, which is having this crazy comeback over the last year. Which to be fair, might be due in part to Travis Scott because he's been wearing a ton of Nike SB Dunk Lows. But even though this shoe might be one of the most popular and hyped up sneakers of the entire year, we still have to look at it critically. Design-wise, it's not exactly Exactly for me. I know a lot of people love this sneaker and a lot of people can pull it off. I'm just not one of those people. However, there are some elements about this shoe that I really like and I think are really cool. The first is the tearaway fabric. Any area that's covered in this sort of paisley print can be torn away or worn away the more you wear it. Underneath, there's actually a very widely spaced tan elephant print pattern. And I love the fact that that sort of gives this shoe a second life the more that you wear it. Another detail that I like is the pink Nike swoosh on the medial side. I feel like it just pops so much more than the black Nike swoosh on the lateral side. And of course, the shoe comes laced with literal rope laces. Like these are actual ropes. This is not like your standard circular rope lace. This is a real rope laced through the shoe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the concept behind this shoe is Texas farm life because I believe Travis actually grew up on a farm. So because of that, you have a lot of different patterns that you would find on farms. I really do like the concept. It's different, it's cool, and it makes this shoe very unique to say the least. Another interesting piece of information is that this shoe actually had two releases in two different variants. The shoe itself didn't change, but the box that the shoe came in did. The first release was exclusive to travisscott.com and it came in a paisley box. And the second release, the the wider release came in a much more simple red, yellow, and blue box. But what's interesting is that the pairs that came in the Travis Scott box are worth like a thousand dollars more, even though the shoe itself is exactly the same. I get the collector mindset, but I think that's stupid. I'm gonna be honest, I think it's stupid. That said, the sneaker itself is fine. If you'd like to check out either of the two variants, they have them both at farfetch.com and they're linked in the description below. Coming in at number two, we've got the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance No Emotions Our Emotions 992. This shoe, in my opinion, is the surprise hit of the year. It's a beautifully made sneaker. The colorway is excellent and people are hyped on it. Like I said earlier in the video, I think New Balance is absolutely killing it this year. Not only did they sign one of the best athletes in the world who won a championship the same year he was signed, but they've also come out with some really excellent collaborations that are extremely high quality. And I think the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 992 is the pinnacle of New Balance's collaborations this year. This shoe released alongside a pair of Joe Fresh Good Omnis that both released on All-Star Weekend. And I actually went to the Joe Fresh Goods event for this sneaker and the hype was unreal. There was people lined up for days just to get this shoe. That right there just goes to show that New Balance is completely revitalizing their brand and making sneakers that people really want and I think that's so cool. The collaboration was also very fitting because All-Star Weekend was in Chicago and Joe Fresh Goods is a Chicago native and he's huge in the Chicago area. The colorway of this collaboration is based on the anatomy of a heart which I think is so cool and so unique. Not only that but it also released on Valentine's Day so it kind of had two meanings there too which I really love. This pair was also made in the US which is part of New Balance's initiative to bring manufacturing to certain countries like the United States and the UK. And even with all that good stuff being said and all the cool concepts and ideas that went into this sneaker, you just have to look at it to realize that this is really a great looking sneaker. Let's be honest, even if the concept behind a collaboration is excellent, if the sneaker doesn't look good, 
no one's gonna care about it. And in the case of the Joe Fresh Goods New Balance 992, the concept is solid and the sneaker looks great. And finally, somewhat predictably at the number one spot, we've got the Off-White Air Jordan 5. I really love this shoe, but I didn't originally, and that's because of the materials, and to be fair, I still don't love the materials, but after wearing this shoe for a couple weeks in Portugal and at home, I just really, I've fallen in love with it. I guess it's because of the unique look of the shoe. It could be the colorway. It could also be that even though the shoe is missing a lot of padding, it's still surprisingly comfortable. For whatever reason, I really like this shoe and I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I do. And to be fair, Virgil was 100% right. He tweeted something out like right before the sneaker dropped how everyone would change their mind when the sneaker dropped because I guess the hype would get to people. And he was right, but I really don't think it's the hype that's getting to me. I think it's the fact that this shoe is just dope. It's a dope sneaker. It looks good, it feels good, and while I feel like there could have been some material differences on the upper, which I would have preferred, still a great collaboration overall. One of the most interesting details on the shoe are the circular cutouts found throughout the sneaker. And while I don't totally understand the reason behind these circles and why you would want to cut them out, I still think the actual execution is really cool. He's doing things that people wouldn't think to do, like cutting out a circle in the center of this mesh area, that's weird, it's different. Especially when you look at the medial side and you see the off-white paragraph that you usually see printed on top of things. This time around, it's actually printed on the bottom layer of the upper, but you can see part of it because of the cutout. I also really like the black metallic colorway. I feel like when Virgil does collaborations with Jordan Brand, he starts them off with a really classic Jordan colorway. And I definitely think that's the right move. I feel like paying homage to the original while still creating something new and different is really important. As much as I thought that the Nike and off-white collaborations had been overdone, Virgil went and he proved us all wrong. He created a sneaker that's really excellent and definitely worth checking out. But that pretty much wraps up the top five best collaboration sneakers to drop so far in 2020. Now I would love to know your thoughts on this list and whether you feel like I left some sneakers out or whether you feel like I shouldn't have put some sneakers in. So let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Farfetch. Make sure to check out some of the products that we talked about in today's video through those links in the description below and use my code SETHFF10 to get 10% off. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.